If you have to cite every little thing that you get from your research, whether it's quoted, paraphrased, or summarized, how is your writing still your own? Here's a musical analogy. I play traditional fiddle tunes that have been handed down from one fiddler to the next and can be traced all the way back to the British Isles, African, and Native American music. The way to learn a tune is to listen to an authentic source recording and try to copy the sound as closely as possible. Does this mean that everyone sounds exactly the same? Not at all. Here's an example. Recently, my friend Dave became obsessed with Midwestern fiddlers. Dave learned this tune from a recording of Chuck Monticello playing the fiddle. But does Dave sound exactly like that other fiddler when he plays the tune? You might argue that all fiddle music sounds alike, and you would have a point there. But if you really listen, they're playing the same tune, but they sound pretty different. Dave sounds like Dave. He's been at this for so long that studying another musician's playing just helps him sound more and more like himself. Even in an oral tradition, the point is to express the music in your own way. When you're writing a paper using other authors as sources, the same concept applies. Incorporating those other voices should help you make your own point more clearly in your own voice. You can learn to quote and paraphrase without letting other authors speak for you. How does this work? I'll cover some common pitfalls first. Let's start with using quotations. Red flag number one is when your quotation is really, really long. It's okay to quote a long passage using a block quote, which is more than 40 words in APA style and more than four lines in MLA style. Sometimes you want to use that much of another work to make your point. How do you know when to stop, though? If you've scooped up more than a paragraph, if your quote is filling up most of a page, or if it's out of proportion to the length of your paper, like a 10-line quote in a two-page paper, stop. What is essential in the passage? Where did the author make the point so compellingly that you don't want to lose it with a paraphrase? Use ellipses, if necessary, to cut down your quote, or put some of the ideas in your own words, still citing the author, of course. Red flag number two is when your paper is made up of a whole bunch of quotations strung together one after another with very few of your own words in between, or even worse, none. This is a double red flag when you rely heavily on just one author rather than finding a variety of expert opinions on the subject. Don't let everyone else make your argument or do your analysis. Take a close look at which quotes might lend themselves to a paraphrase or a summary instead, where the way that the author says it isn't so special that you really want to reproduce it in your paper. Red flag number three is when you begin or end a paragraph with a quote, a sure sign that you are trying to have the quote make your point for you. Quotes don't fly in from outer space and crash land in your paper. You should always introduce your quote with a signal phrase that lets the reader know who the author is and why the quote is important. A rule of thumb for the end of a paragraph is that your quotes should always be followed up with at least one more sentence that helps the reader understand how it relates to your point and transitions you into the next paragraph. The quote illustrates your point. It is not your point. So we've looked at red flags with regards to quotations. As I said, one way to get quotations under control is to replace the quote with a summary or paraphrase still citing the original author. And in general, when in doubt, cite. You certainly want to give credit where credit is due. So how can you avoid a paper where every sentence is completely covered in parentheticals and footnotes? Make sure that when you're using other people's work, you can explain exactly how the quote or paraphrase functions in your paper. That means you have to demonstrate that you really understand what the original author was saying. What point are you trying to make by using the idea? If you can articulate this to yourself, try writing it down. For example, 
This data provides evidence that the company's revenue has fallen for three years, which supports my conclusion that they need a new CEO. Or, I have observed that in recordings of older fiddlers, the phrases can start on either an up or a down bow, and Mount concurs, writing that, quote, there's lots of room for eccentricity in old time fiddle, end quote. Now you're ready to integrate the source into your own work in a way that contributes to your argument and illustrates your point. Your sources should be supporting what you have to say, not the other way around. Citations give credit to the sources that you relied on and demonstrate to your reader that you understand what the experts have to say on your topic. The more you practice using them, the more they will help you express yourself in your own voice.